All right, so we'll start the second half. So I'll let you take it away. Sure, thanks. So uh, let me remind you what we are uh, doing. We have the uh, 15 puzzle on, we have, we're starting the 15 puzzle on the, on the uh, infinite, uh, on the infinite uh, uh, board. We're making random moves and we're asking what is the probability that after n steps, uh, uh, we return to the original configurations configuration. This is equivalent to a statement uh, on the tails of the spectral measure of the integrated density of states. And one would think that perhaps one can prove it using uh, uh, ideas of the uh, of this Lipschitz kind by cutting into pieces. But to do this, we would need to understand, we would need to understand uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, how uh, uh, typical or uh, what is the, how, uh, uh, our matrix acts on the uh, Plancherel random representation, and this is beyond my uh, abilities at this moment. So instead, we'll do instead we'll direct it to we'll we'll really rely on the fifteen puzzle and and uh, and uh, prove uh, prove this and uh, the first item and then use the second one and not vice versa. So I should give some uh, uh, I should mention some history. So before Barry Simon, there was a different way of proving Lipschitz tails due to uh, Pastor and and uh, uh, Don Scrivaradan. It was, it did not apply to the model which we are discussing right now. It, at first it was devised for a very special Poisson model on the continuum, uh, 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 but uh, uh, it it was somehow very it gave more precise re results than the form of Lipschitz tails which I've stated and eventually it was developed by other people particular by particularly by Biskup uh, and uh, Koenig uh, I think two thousand one so still before uh, still before uh, uh, potential of costas uh, costas of course, uh, but, uh, 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 and uh, so there, uh, uh, so all this relies on the uh, instead of uh, uh, well, all this uh, all this relies on the Feynman Katz uh, formula for for uh, uh, the, the analysis of the semi group uh, defined by uh, defined by the the, the uh, random operator. So uh, what we what we do with the hard we develop a somewhat uh, uh, less precise version of this, which is more uh, so our uh, we uh, develop a robust version uh, of this. Robust means that it's uh, it doesn't give uh, very precise results. For the case of the usual Anderson model, it basically re recovers the result of Barry Simon rather than the more precise logarithmic asymptotics of uh, Biskup and Koenig. Uh, but it has the great advantage that it's uh, it can be applied in the in our non-commutative uh, uh, non-commutative uh, setting. So uh, uh, all this relies crucially on the work of Don Skarn Varadan on, uh, 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 on the large deviations of, uh, for the number of sites visited by a random walk. So we don't literally, in our version, since we're interested in crude bounds, we don't use their work. We, we, we can, uh, things which can be proved by hands suffice to get more precise results, or presumably one, can use, one should use more. Uh, but okay, so these are the preliminaries. Now let me try to describe the idea. So uh, there is a balance between two. So let's denote by Rn. Uh, so you remember our process is driven by usual random walk, we, uh, the, the, the motion of the empty square. And let's denote by Rn or R2n the range of the, of the usual random walk, the, the, the collection of sites visited by the empty square in two n steps. So now uh, uh, what we'll do is the following. We want to estimate the probability that, that uh, 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 we return to the initial configuration. We'll bound it as follows uh, as a sum of two terms. Uh, so you see, there's a balance. If uh, the range is very large, then uh, the puzzle will be very mixed and it is very unlikely that we'll return back to the initial configuration. On the other hand, if, for example, the 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 uh, we only move the square back and forth on two squares, the probability to return 
to, to, to return to the initial configuration is very large, it's one half. But then we're on a very atypical event for the random walk, since the random walk doesn't like to stay in such a small region. So we need to balance these two things somehow. So we, and we do it as follows, we bound P to N by the probability that the range of the random walk is, is small. I left some empty space here to add something uh, less than R, where this is a parameter, plus the probability that it's uh, 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 greater than R, and we return, and we return uh, to uh, the initial configuration. So, uh, so uh, uh, the idea is that the first term is, uh, if R is chosen, we'll choose R so that the two terms will be approximately of the same size. The first term is a large deviation event for the random walk. It doesn't have to do uh, with the 15 puzzle at all. It's just a fact about the range. And the second, uh, in the second, we need somehow to quantify the fact that if uh, the random walk visited many sites, it's very unlikely that it will unentangle uh, whatever we entangled. So uh, ideally, ideally, the ideal bound on the next, uh, on the second term would be uh, uh, one over one over uh, R factorial, since we have we have we visited R sites, and ideally we would like uh, all the permutations of R sites to be uh, to be equally likely. We don't know how to prove it, so instead instead we 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 prove uh, uh, a bound one over two to the R and not exactly for this, we'll uh, introduce an extra term which I'll define shortly. This is where the log, the, the, the mismatch between the logs, uh, between the upper, the logarithmic mismatch between the upper and lower bound comes in. And for the first term, we, 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 we use a simple version of those covariance. Okay, so, so, uh, so uh, let, let, let me now tell you some more details. So claim, and this is a, and this is a claim one, uh, the probability that uh, the range so uh, usually uh, usually uh, the range of the random walk is square root of n by square root of n right so it's usually the 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 range should be of order n to the d over two so now now uh, uh, we ask what is the probability that the range is less than n to the d over d plus two so much smaller than this and the claim is that this is uh, this is uh, uh, exponentially small in in the same quantity and to the d over d plus two so it turns out that the optimal choice of r is is of this order again up to logs so this is a very kind of robust version of don skirvaridan don skirvaridan give them a much more precise uh, large deviation result for the for the range but this is enough for our purposes and this can be easily proved by hands so it's it, uh, uh, this allows us to estimate uh, the first term. Now, uh, what we actually need is a bit uh, more than that. Uh, so uh, we uh, let's denote. So let's look at our at our uh, uh, walk. So uh, um, uh, a vertex x in the range, so that's for a definition, is uh, called flexible if uh, uh, the following happens: if after the first visit to x the random walk do, does two steps in different directions. I'll draw a picture in a second. In a second. Direction. So, uh, in other, uh, in a pictorially, if this is the our vertex x, uh, the, and after the first visit we do this, or we do this, uh, these are flexible. If we do this. This is non flex. This is not flexible. A flexible a vertex is flexible if after the first visit we we do uh, uh, two steps in 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 two in two different directions. This is also not flexible. Okay. And now we denote by we denote by f uh, the collection of all flexible uh, uh, vertices. 
is the definition uh, okay so what what we are trying to do now is uh, what we are trying to do perhaps i should have said it earlier is a kind of pyros type argument we want to construct a one to many map from the set of walks uh, to itself such that uh, basically to each walk for which uh, we get the identity we associate many many other works for which we don't get the identity and this is what what gives us the upper bound of the probability to get the identity so so uh, 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 um, uh, the, the, uh, we, we've defined this collection of flexible vertices and it turns out that in all these bounds so we'll insert it everywhere in, in the bounds well uh, here and everywhere else will take the intersection with the, with the, with f and it turns out that uh, with not much work we can squeeze an intersection with f also in the don scarvard unbound at least on this level of precision uh, uh, if uh, the bound uh, remains the same up to the numerical value of the constant if if we if we if instead of the range we take the flexible range the the, the, the set of flexible vertices in the range is this is this fine? So uh, so what is the reason to do all this? Uh, now I can explain briefly uh, how our map works. So uh, we we have our walk. We mark all our, all the flexible vertices. So this is flexible, and this is flexible. Well, this is flexible and this is flexible and this is flexible and this is flexible and this one and this two uh, also and now for each of the flexible vertices we are we can uh, we uh, we have the two next steps which go in different directions and we can replace their order so instead of instead of going here and then here we can go down and then right similarly uh, similarly Instead of uh, these two steps, we can we can uh, we can uh, do the one which is going in this one. This one. So forth. So uh, 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 we have R. We have R, uh, which is n to the uh, 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 d over d plus two. Uh, uh, flexible uh, vertices. So we have R, R of these uh, points where we can uh, replace our walk with something different. So I so so we have in in total we have two to the R. Uh, we started with the black walk. Uh, we associate to it two to the R other other walks which are obtained by picking any subset of the flexible vertices and replacing replacing the black uh, piece with the purple piece. For any, for any subset, we get another walk, and they, I, I, I claim that no, I mean two to the r minus one, uh, two to the r minus one other walks, two to the r in total, including the one which have, which we started with, and they claim that uh, uh, among these uh, uh, two to the r uh, walks, at at most uh, one uh, uh, returns to the uh, initial uh, configuration of the puzzle and therefore the probability once we have a lower bound on the on this flexible range the probability to to uh, uh, return to the initial configuration is at most one over two to the r as as uh, as I claimed, that once we combine this with uh, with this don't uh, square uh, type bound, we get uh, we get the upper bound, which uh, which uh, has this statement. So uh, okay, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to explain the full details, but uh, the idea is it's a, this is really if if you understand well how the fifth and puzzle works, it's somewhat clear. So it's it's very easy to see that. If you uh, do one of these replacements, you can't. Uh, it's impossible that both of them will give you the the, the same uh, permutation of the ends. And somehow you you uh, made a move. Uh, you moved one square somewhere, and you can never undo this move because you 
Uh, this is the first uh, visit of the, of the walk with some more effort, but still nothing very sophisticated. You can uh, convince yourself that uh, even uh, that no two, uh, uh, no two of these two to the R walks can simultaneously give you the, the identity permutation. Uh, and that's how the, the again, you always, if you have two of them, you can always find a square which moves somewhere and then you can never undo the, in two, two different places and you can never uh, undo this move. So, so uh, this is basically, this is basically uh, uh, how the, how the, how the argument works. I don't think I want to go to uh, uh, to more details. Uh, yes, no, I, I think, I think, I'll, I think I'll stop here. Uh, uh, yes. Any questions? Um, so this is the, uh, the upper bound or uh, and the yeah, lower this bound? Is, this is the upper bound, the lower bound. I haven't explained it since it's easier. For the lower bound, once you uh, prove that this, uh, once you prove that this uh, converts to uh, to this, uh, once you know that this is uh, can be inverted, uh, the, the lower bound follows from a kind of Cauchy Schwarz, which is not very hard. Okay. And uh, we, we believe that our lower bound is precise and not the upper bound. So we, we believe we believe that uh, 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 this should be uh, true. But, but, uh, but to prove it, you need to, you can't only use the, the first visit time. So you, you need to. Didn't you have some additional logarithmic factors in the lower bound? So uh, the lower bound, uh, yeah, I mean, there is a difference in the logarithm and they believe that the lower bound is sharp and the upper bound is not. Uh, Contrary to the Anderson model. Yes, uh, but it's not, there's no mystery there two to the, no, the Anderson model depends which Anderson model. The Bernoulli-Anderson model doesn't have logarithms, but a continuous, if you have a continuous potential, then uh, there is a logarithm. Oh, okay. So uh, it, it's there's no mystery. It's it has to do with kind of the entropy. So it, it's the Bernoulli-Anderson has two to the two to the k possible realizations, and and uh, uh, so here you have an additional factorial since the symmetric group has uh, is of size n factorial, and uh, so simple. Oh, okay, at least at least we believe that the left hand side is the truth. Is there some hope of getting the matching upper bound? I think there is hope, but we, uh, but we, uh, okay. Uh, there's, uh, I, I don't think it is independent of Cervalo Frankel, and I don't think it requires the Riemann hypothesis. So I, I, I probably a more careful uh, combinatorial argument should do the job, but but uh, uh, we didn't manage to do it. Uh, we spent a couple of months uh, uh, thinking about it. It annoyed us quite a bit, and uh, we, uh, we got stuck. But but it doesn't. I mean, we, we... Any other questions? So um, j just to be clear, you you think that with more knowledge of. Um, of a presentation theory, you could maybe also use this to probe the, the transition or the spectral type. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, it's an interesting question. And I, uh, it's, it's, it's really a question of how far this analogy goes. Uh, I, I don't have a good, uh, 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 good answer, but, but uh, this one will be this one. I, I, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in dimension D looks hard, hard since uh, it's a kind of Bruno Anderson, but perhaps a strip of width two one could check whether you have localization or not. It's not uh, it's not immediate because uh, you can't. At least I don't know how to set up uh, a transfer matrix and use. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how to prove the positivity of Lapin exponent uh, in this uh, setting, especially since. Uh, so it, yeah, okay. Uh, 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 but but uh, yeah, so I uh, that would be the, the 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 true test of whether this analogy is is, is founded or is, is, is in solid ground or not. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, let's all thank Sasha again.